Uh, what a great day for an outdoor event. I'm Dr. Confrey Carney and as provost of the Tarpon Springs campus of St. Petersburg College, it is my great joy to welcome each of you on this special day to honor and to pay tribute to one of our very own, a friend, a colleague whose work, legacies, and traditions as founding leader and provost of this campus still stand today. The results of which are still felt today and our caring faculty and staff started many years ago are still seen today these buildings with Greek letters and Greek names. So the results of the man that we come today to honor and to pay a long overdue tribute, Mr. Nick Bolaris. Today's recognition event had its beginnings more than 40 years ago when the Spring, the Tarpon Springs Learning Center started a three-year pilot that was started at the Spring State Bank building that still stands today on Hibiscus Street. Among the focuses of the leading administrators and the provosts was to make sure that we had continued enrollment growth and to make sure that the quality of education provided to the students at the Learning Center would enable them to excel at the next level of four-year college education. Imagine that. Must have been some sleepless nights here and there. <laughs> some crazy days here and there. Well, that three-year pilot not only was successful, it was very successful. And the rich traditions of quality education, enrollment, growth, community support, and outreach were established on this campus from the very beginning. And so today, we shall honor and recognize and celebrate the founding leader who was at the center of it all, Mr. Nick Bolaris. And I can sum it up in three words. Thank you, Nick, <laughs> for the rich traditions that you established on this campus and that we still value to this day. Thank you, sir. Before we start with our celebration today, let us start first with an invocation Please stand and welcome Reverend Father James Rusakis. Father Rusakis. Thank you. <coughs> Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. Almighty God, our help and refuge fountain of wisdom and tower of strength, who knows that we do nothing without your guidance and help. Continue to assist and direct to divine wisdom and power, the administration, the trustees, faculty, students, and supporters of St. Petersburg College, who today recognize the outstanding accomplishments of Nick Beliris during his tenure as the first provost of this campus by naming the administration building in his honor. We acknowledge the service of the college to offer a high level of education to all who desire to learn and fulfill their life's goal. We acknowledge the efforts of the faithful servant, Nick Beliris, 
and pray that you bless him and his family as they continue to put their trust in you. Sanctify and reward him with glory by your divine power. We pray that you be his light when the day is dark and he knows not which way to turn, to be his fortress in the hour of temptation, a house of defense and a shield to save him, to be his strength when the flesh is weak and the spirit sore troubled and depressed, to be his courage in the hour of danger and the day of adversity, and to be his hope when all other hope fails. Grant him health of mind and body. Direct his thoughts, Lord, that he may continue on your path towards salvation. Enlighten him to continue to be a service to those who come his way. May he and St. Petersburg College continue to be successful and productive. This prayer and this supplication we offer to you in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Father Rusakis. Father Rusakis is acting dean at the Nicholas St. Nicholas Cathedral, and he's vicar of the West Florida for the metropolis of Atlanta. Thank you very much, Father Rusakis, for those words. As you know, as you may know, the month of March is one of the more significant months in Greek history. Yesterday, March 25th, marked the 193rd year of celebrating Greek independence from 400 years of Turkish rule and occupation. On Sunday, I'm sorry, on Saturday, our campus hosted a mini-conference and forum for the American Foundation for Greek Language and Culture with the theme Greek Independent, 193 years in review. Nick and his wife, Mary Ellen, was there, and I was so happy, Nick, that you came to that to see that we're still carrying on your tradition of outreach to the community and involving the community in what we do. On Sunday, of course, was the annual Greek Independence Day Parade and our students were there and participated in that. And so I think it's very fitting that we choose this week to honor and to cherish and to celebrate Nick for his traditions and, and to share with you some Greek culture. As a part of our program today, our Student Government Association and our Hellenic Student Club will also be honoring Nick Polaris, as well as sharing with you some of the Greek culture in the forms of music, dance, and food. At this time, I'd like to introduce some of the dignitaries who have joined us today. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce and recognize former Congressman Mike Bilirakis and distinguished professor here at St. Petersburg College. Congressman Bilirakis. <laughs> Current member of the Board of Directors of Leaper Ratner Museum, Museum of Art and past member of the St. Pete College Board of Trustees, Evelyn Bilirakis is with us today. <laughs> Mr. Ken Burke, Clerk of Court, Pinellas County, and past member of the St. Petersburg Board of Trustees, Ms. Ken. <laughs> Townsend Ter Terrapani, City Commissioner, City of Tarpon Springs, Rich Townsend. <laughs> David Banther, City Commissioner, City of Tarpon Springs. Where's David? Where's David? <laughs> Chris Alahuzos, President, Sister Cities of Tarpon Springs and past City Commissioner and Vice Chair, City of Tarpon Springs, Chris. <laughs> Ms. Beverly Belarus past mayor of City of Tarpon Springs and member of the Leaper Ratner Board of Directors, Beverly. <laughs> Mr. Robin Singer is here with us, current member of the Leaper Ratner Board of Directors and past city commissioner and vice mayor, City of Tarpon Springs. <laughs> oh, Mr. Ed Hoffman. Ed Hoffman, where, where is, where's Ed? Ed is an award-winning architect of the Leaper Ratner Museum of Art. There he is. And member of the Leaper Ratner Museum of Art Board of Directors. Thank you, Ed, for coming. Mr. Brian Pauls. Where's Brian? 
Brian Pauls is past president of American Foundation for Greek Language and Culture. Brian, thank you for coming and joining us. Ms. Calliope Halkias, vice president of the American Foundation for Greek Language and Culture. Senior reporter and former editor-in-chief of the National Herald, the premier Greek national newspaper for 97 years. Mr. Stavros Mamorinos, where is Stavros? There he is. Thank you, Stavros. Ms. Susan Thomas, the president of the Chamber of Commerce is here with us today. Reggie Gibbons of the Chamber of Commerce is also, Gibson is also here today. Thank you, Reggie. And now for some St. Pete College guests. I want to thank all of the St. Pete College, my colleagues from Points South, but especially Mr. Tom Furlong. Tom, where's Tom? Oh! And there is uh, Mr. Debron Gibbons is here with us. Debron is the chairman of the St. Pete College Board of Trustees. Thank you, Debron. Um, there are many, many faculty and staff who was here when Nick was here. If you were on the faculty and staff when Nick was provost here, could you raise your hand? What about our current students who are here today? Current students, raise your hands. All right, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and last but not least, are there any students here, or are there any, any person here who was a student when Nick was provost? Hey, look at that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> thank you all for coming today. And now I'd like to introduce our president, Mr. Bill Law, Dr. Bill Law. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Dr. Law is the sixth president of St. Petersburg College, which offers higher education opportunities for residents in Pinellas and nearby counties for more than 86 years. He came to St. Pete in, 19, in, in 2010 following a nationwide search. For the past 25 years, he has served as a, in a number of leadership roles at colleges across the country and for various government agencies. Also as a part of his work experience, he too knows Nick Belarus, and he knows Nick very well. <laughs> he knows firsthand about Nick's knowledge, his innovations, and his passion for student success and for students finishing what they start. Please welcome President Bill Law, St. Petersburg College. Thanks very much. Can we take just a second? Dr. Comfort Carney has put all this together. I showed up, okay, he and his staff. Um, if, if there is a worthy successor to Nick Valeris, it is Comfort okay? They, they share a, a great deal today. Thank you for joining us today as we honor the man most responsible for creating this beautiful campus. I believe it is fair to say St. Petersburg College might not have had a Tarpon Springs campus if it weren't for Nick. Most certainly it would not be as grand, as aesthetically pleasing, or as functional as it is today. You know, when Nick, when they, all those folks who were staff were raising their hand, I leaned over and said, Nick, did we give you the money for all those positions? Okay. And, and he said, don't ask. <laughs> Nick was a math teacher a football coach and a swimming coach, although he couldn't swim. I was going to rewrite that sentence to say he was a swimming coach who couldn't swim, a football player who couldn't pl uh, play football, and a math teacher who didn't know math, okay? <laughs> but he was a swimming coach. At Clearwater High in 1970, when St. Petersburg College President Mike Bennett asked him to take over the beginnings of a campus in Tarpon Springs, the town where he was born and raised and where his extended family still live. It was an offer he couldn't resist. At the time, there were 155 students taking, look to your left, look to your right. This was it, <laughs> okay? Uh, 155 students taking classes in the building scattered about the city. Today, there are 5,800 students on this beautiful hillside campus. Surrounded by trees, Nick insisted, should not be chopped down as the site was being developed. You know that picture we have of that, that gentleman in China standing in front of the tanks? He got that from Nick standing in front of the bulldozers. 
Stop me when I'm lying, Nick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nick would be the first to tell you he did not build this campus alone. In fact, he rarely took personal credit for anything, always insisting that everything accomplished was a team effort. He built strong ties with the Tarpon Springs community, the mayor and city commission, local churches including St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church, local bankers, business owners, and civic organizations. Many of you here today can recall working with Nick on successful college and community projects. He was a man with good ideas and took time to convince others that his ideas were sound and beneficial to students. His son Mark, a St. Petersburg College man, where's Mark? There he is, okay. A, a, we are proud to say a St. Petersburg College math professor and one of four of Nick's sons says his dad ran the campus the same way he ran the family. faculty got sent to bed without dinner. No, that's not what it says, okay. He had high expectations and expected us to succeed. He laid a path for us to follow. He hired faculty and staff with dynamic personalities, much like his, who challenged students to reach their full potential and he supported their new initiatives and innovative approaches to problem solving and effective teaching. Each term he insisted on teaching a college algebra class to stay in touch with students in campus life. On weekdays, it was not uncommon to find him still on campus at 10 p.m. as students were wrapping up their night classes. It, there's a note here to me, it says, here, add personal comments about your friendship. I could go on for a long, long time. I'm gonna tell just one or two things about Nick. This, this, this two, this three. <laughs> When I was a vice president, uh, then I first had a chance to work with Nick. I was on my way to Tallahassee at one point, and I had only been here for a little while. I called Nick and said, Nick, I'm going to drive to Tallahassee this afternoon. I'd like to stop by the campus. Could you have a few minutes to really show me around? We had met and, and whatnot. And he said, somebody from the district office called to come visit to look at our campus? I said, yeah, Nick, that's me, okay? He said, sure, come by. So, you know, in those days it was, it was still quite a trip, right? So we come and I get to the entry here and Nick has gone out and rented one of those cheesy roadside signs with the blinking lights on it and, the, you know, the letters that don't quite spell and it says, Welcome Vice President Law. <laughs> So I've always felt welcome here, Nick. Okay. <laughs> when I moved on as a president, I was in Texas at, at a point in my career, and I was, uh, I was building a college from scratch, Nick, very same, so I, I thought of you very often. And uh, the bookstore, we were an offshoot from one of the campuses, and I, hear, I go in and the sign says, make checks payable to, and it's one of the other campuses. <clears throat> So I start raising hell. Uh, you know, we're a campus and we should have our own and everything else. And the, the, the guy says to me, you worked at St. Pete College, didn't you? I said, yeah. He said, do you know Nick Boleras? Because I'm hearing his voice. And it was, it, was, it was the guy who was our old account rep, Nick. So one last story, though, that's more important. It really tells the story about Nick Boleras. Uh, when I got back, Nick had retired and he had, uh, I think, graciously separated himself a little bit so new folks could, could take over and he wasn't there, bird dog and everything. And, uh, and I had lunch with him and I said, Nick, I need, you to, I need you to come back to campus though. I need you to show some, some love and, and come back. And he said, well, I, you know, I'm a little off. I said, please do it for me. So we had uh, faculty orientation in, in August, new faculty. All the faculty were in the room and we were given the usual kind of welcome back and Nick came and I said Nick say a few words to the faculty and Nick started talking and his voice cracked when he started talking about students and learning he couldn't get through a whole sentence because that's where his passion and love were then are now and it still resonates with all of us so we appreciate that In our industry, in our industry, Nick, the highest praise we know how to give, we'll put your name on a building, and that's important, but the highest praise is to remind you that people who do not know your name have had their lives enriched and made better as a result of your efforts. Thank you.
thing I had to do. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Law. The next uh, speaker on our program is a, also a good friend of Nick's. Worked on Nick's staff for a long time. Uh, Dr. Karen Estes. Before Karen comes up, though, I want to give a special thanks to our event planning team. Dr. Law mentioned it takes a lot of work to put on an event like this, and there were a number of people who worked very, very hard. Uh, Dr. Ch John Chapin was on our team. Laura Smith was on our team. Urania Stefanides was on our team. Rod Davis. Uh, Teresa Contoriakis. Karen Nadu. Deborah Boyles. Olin Conrad. And Aaron Sinak Dom was on our team. And I thank all of you for making this such a great event. Also, our facilities teams have been working. Our facilities team have been working day and night to make this place look as beautiful as, as it is. And uh, I'm very, very thankful to the facilities team as well. Dr. Karen Estes. She began her teaching career at St. Petersburg Junior College in August 1983 at the Tarpon Springs Center, teaching a variety of classes in mathematics, college algebra, trigonometry, calculus one, and especially statistics. She taught 28 years at SPC and retired in July of 2011. In 2012, she was named a, named a professor emeritus at St. Petersburg College. Please welcome now Dr. Karen Estes. When I was asked to speak, I would speak, I was kind of thinking of, you know, 35 years and 35 minutes. And uh, <laughs> Dr. Carney suggested that I might shorten it a bit, so I've tried. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't it a glorious day? And for our guests of honor, Nick Valeris and his wife, Mariella, sons and family, Kalo Apoyabama. One more time. Kalo Apoyabama. I practice on that good afternoon in Greek. Close? Close enough? Today we're here to celebrate Nick's accomplishments on this campus the Tarpon Springs campus of St. Petersburg Junior College, and today the building behind me is going to be named in his honor. I am blessed to be able to speak to this group today. It's my, my bit here to tell you the story of the Tarpon Springs campus, but it's really not just my story to tell. It belongs to all of the faculty members, the staff, the administration that have worked together, and to the students as well. So I've asked for memories from my colleagues You'll find them on the guest book that's over there by the food. Don't miss it because there's some great pictures. And if you worked here, look for your picture. I think you might find it. I want to talk first of all about the mission because that's where it all started. And Dr. Law alluded to this in 1970, the Tarpon Springs community approached the board of St. Petersburg Junior College to start a campus up here. And out of that came an agreement that the Tarpon Springs community would provide the facilities which started at the Springs State Bank, and they'd provide the faculty. And Nick Valeris signed on as a St. Petersburg Junior College employee, and he had one mission, and you know what that was, it was students. How often did you hear that, students? He was administrator then, but he was also recruiter and counselor and community outreach. And although our numbers differ a little bit in the fall term, there were 157 students on average, we're close. But the following fall term, one year later, it was 421. And if you're doing the math on that, that's a 170% increase. <laughs> Did we need the college here? You bet. The Tarpon Spring campus continued to grow and in 1975, this facility, came to the Tarpon Springs campus and the buildings were named with Greek names. And why is that? Because we wanted to honor the community that we were part of and symbolize the good relationship between the community and the college. It still exists today, you can see. The new campus brought the first full-time staff. 
And when I asked for comments, John Teeter sent this one back. He said he remembered his interview with Nick, and he remembers leaving that interview thinking, this is a man with a vision that's going to nurture learning, and I want to be a part of that. He stuck around for several decades like the rest of us. We wanted to be here. Over the years, Mr. Bolaris helped the Tarpon Springs campus and faculty and students grow. When I asked my colleagues, they said, Sue Cornett said this best, almost every fall faculty meeting, maybe every faculty meeting, I'm not sure, Nick would say something like this, remember people, it's not about you, it's about the students and the program. Yeah, it was about the students and the program. We also want to talk about Mr. Blairs' leadership, right? The leadership that brought us together today. Sally Kaiser noted, it was challenging and fun to work with Mr. Blairs to grow this campus. She really enjoyed the collaborative effort that designed the building behind us. That was an important part to her. Maria Edmonds recalled that what impressed her most was Mr. Blairs' passion for the job. It was important to do the right things for students and to do that right the first time because you might not have another opportunity. <laughs> Tino Daniels commented that everyone who worked at the Tarpon Springs campus knew that we were a team and we worked together to help the whole student body. Mr. Bolaris was right up front with that uh, cross-training. We were all learning different jobs. Fred Seacock remembers that other campuses, folks from other campuses, thought that this was maybe a bit of a harsh environment to work in. <laughs> the reason for that, we were a small staff. Faculty members didn't serve on a committee. They served on a lot of committees. And I'm telling you, according to those in the South, it's farther to drive north than it is to go south. Yes. <laughs> Glad you all could make it this far north today. It's also true that all the full-time faculty members taught a night class. That was a part of our requirement, and that's because Nick wanted the night students to have the same quality of education. Despite what other people thought, the Tarpon Spring campus flourished. Students were successful, and this became, in some ways, a training ground. This campus was small and a microcosm of the college at large. When you worked at Tarpon, regardless of what your job was, you were working in many areas. You had a grander vision of what the college was like. I can see some heads shaking yes out there. It's really true. John Chapin remembers that when he was leaving teaching and moving into administration, moving to Texas maybe, that Nick said to him, here's the deal. Always be fair to the people you work with and be honest with the money. That's right on advice, isn't it? Mr. B promised Myrtle Williams, we're going to work hard and we're going to play hard. Now Myrtle said there was more work than playing, I have, I have to tell you that. <laughs> but you know, with the idea of playing hard, that student activities were a really important part of what was going on at the uh, Tarpon Springs campus. And if you look at the guest book and you look at the pictures, you're going to see a lot of those April Follies softball games pictures because we enjoyed those things, faculty, staff, students alike. Uh, but Laura, Laura Smith reminded me of the great turkey hunt that took place. Now the thing about the great turkey hunt is we were teaching archery at the time and the goal was, you know, you're going to shoot the arrows, you're going to go on the straw, whoever gets the closest gets a frozen turkey. And there was a lot of advertising, and the hunters showed up from Pasco County with their guns. <laughs> and Mr. Belair said to Laura, you're on this. You go down there and tell them. It's not that kind of turkey, huh? <laughs> All right, the last thing I want to talk about is academics, because if you've taught on this campus, you've been a student on this campus, you know about academics. Martha Campbell commented that Mr. Belair's core values, including setting clear priorities, in your syllabus, which was a contract with the students, and maintaining academic standards. He was very clear about academic standards. This is what it meant. If a student finished your class, 
they were ready for what came next. It could be the next class, it could be moving into the university, or it could be moving into the career. We were preparing students for the next step. That was his idea of student success. As Dr. Law said, Mr. Belair stayed connected with the classroom. He taught college algebra. And you know about the art and science of uh, teaching. It's full of frustration and it's full of exhilaration. And it was kind of heartwarming to you know, go by his office and hear him muttering about college algebra. He was going to get it right the next time. <laughs> now, when we taught, um, I taught college algebra as well. Nick and I had two different philosophies. I was all about the technology. Here's your graphing calculator. Here's your statistics software. Nick was all about, here's your pencil. <laughs> You learn from that computation. And we had a lot of nice discussions about that. Some of them heated, and you've worked with Nick, you know that sometimes when he's passionate about things, that red color starts coming up. <laughs> but the good thing about Nick is even though that red color starts coming up, you can disagree with him, and when you walk away, you know that's fine. We're good there. We disagree. There's nothing coming later to harm you. So anyway, I wanted to say about the teaching our teaching styles were so different, and yet not once did Nick try to make me teach under his methods. He let me teach with the calculator and whatever. So, I wanted also to mention Basil Mutsatsis. I don't think Basil's here today. He has a class at the Clearwater campus. He's full-time now, but he was an adjunct with us. And the very first night that Basil was teaching, um, you showed up at seven o'clock to check on Basil. Make sure he had two hours and 40 minutes worth of material prepared because we never dismiss classes early. And to make sure that young adjunct teacher and his students were going to be okay. So Basil was very impressed that the provost was still here at seven and taking a personal interest in him. So one last public service announcement. There's a guest book. It has a ton of pictures on it. Look for a picture. Uh, you're going to find something that will speak to you and you'll want to sign a little memory for Nick that he can, he can look at later. Um, and there's a little video, it's not little, it's a big TV, of uh, pictures. Take some time to look at those. They're great memories that, uh, on the committee. We enjoyed watching them go by. And then one last story, and this one's personal for me. In 1990, I had the opportunity to travel to Italy and France with my mom. And you know, if you've worked with Nick and you like to travel, you've talked with him, right? He's telling you where are the best places, what the best restaurants to enjoy. But this is the best advice he gave me, because I was terrified. And my mom kept saying, oh, I'm not worried because Karen will take care of it. <laughs> so Nick said to me, look, don't worry. Just smile. Try to say a few words in their language. They'll like it. It'll be wonderful. I'm telling you, it was wonderful. It was about as wonderful as working here. So tonight, today, this afternoon, I hope we can follow his advice because if you don't know this word, I'm going to teach it to you. And if you do know it, you don't need me to tell you. That word is axios. Axios, you got it? Axios means he is worthy. Now Nick used that word a lot for us, but I want us to use it today. So are you ready? Yes. From the heart. One, two, three. Oxios. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. I'm going to make a change in the uh, in the program. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do the unveiling now so that the entire family can see that unveiling. And then we'll give the family an opportunity to share some words. And then we'll invite up the guest of honor to share some words after that. So I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Jim Wechter, Associate Vice President, to um, command the unveiling. Thank you, Confrey, for this very unique opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. B. On behalf of the administration, the faculty, the student, the staff, and most of all, the students, the learning, past, 
present, and future. I am both humbled and honored to present to you the unveiling of the Nick M. Belaris Administration Building. Are there any members of the Belarus family, immediate family, who may wish to share some words? Please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is George Belarus. I'm Nick's second son, and we didn't really realize that the family was going to be asked to speak, and so I won't have anything as elegant and wonderful as what Karen had to share. But certainly, uh, we wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for all of you for coming and sharing this glorious day with my father. And I uh, wanted to share a few stories of our own. Uh, when, when Tarpon Campus was the onset of Tarpon Campus, my brothers and I were single digits in age. So we grew with this campus and matured. and. Um, one of the things that uh, was shared was how tight the budget was. And so my father, being innovative as he is, broke every child labor law there was known to man. <laughs> and he was very sly about this. He would tell us, who wants to go fishing? So all of us raised our hand, and we were like four little Opies behind Sheriff Taylor with our fishing poles whistling. He said, well, we've got to make one little stop. So we, we would stop at the, the, the bank building, and inside was rollers of paint, buckets, and we would spend the afternoon painting the inside of the, the building to prepare for classes. As time went on, my oldest brother, Mike, the smartest one of the group, decided to uh, not partake. And, and as these, this campus was being built, my dad said, well, who wants to go shoot bows and arrows? Because they still had the, the, um, the, the uh, archery program, thank you. And so we decided, we'll go up there and do that. Well, once again, the tools got broken out and it was like an assembly line of putting desks together and library shelves together. And um, we certainly enjoyed the time of doing that because my father was so passionate about this campus and so passionate about this community. He taught us faith, family were the most important thing and he wanted that to be what this campus was all about and he strove very hard to do that and Karen you know you said that he he raised this this family much like his own we didn't get to talk back to him like you did <laughs> but he truly was dedicated to this and I know for many a time we felt like we were orphans to this to this college when we were ourselves going away to college and asking for help to move, my dad's like, you're moving either before registration day or after, because when it's registration week, everybody shows up for work at Tarpon Campus, including me, and, and they did. And how proud he was of the faculty and the students and the community of Tarpon Springs. And he didn't share that enough maybe with you because that passion in him would break, it, break him up a little. And I know he didn't want to show that side, but I'll share it with you. He was so proud that everyone that worked here could do every job on campus. And he would say that. We are understaffed, but we can do everything. Everybody can do every job on this campus. And we are totally committed to the students here. And he really was so passionate in his heart about taking the values that his parents installed in him as immigrants making that part of what he did in this community 
and letting that knowledge prosper down the road to be shared with others. And Vince Lombardi once said that the quality of a man's life is directly proportional to his commitment to excellence. And my father has had a wonderful life because he was committed to excellence. So thank you. Once again, on behalf of my family, thank you so much for sharing this day and Oxios. <laughs> Nick, don't sit down. <laughs> it's your turn. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest of honor, Mr. Nick Valeris. Wow. Shit, registration. Look how many students we've got out here. Uh, my heart is filled. I'm overwhelmed. I, I can't begin to tell you. Uh, you know, it's, it, if you've ever been to a bullfight, we had an occasion to, to go to one. We often talk about that poor bull. Bull comes out, and then the picadors jab at it, and there's another ones that jab at it to break it down. Well, I think that's what I've been hearing. Everybody's been jabbing at me, knowing that, Nick, you talk too much, so, so you don't get emotional. But let me share with you, uh, the development of this campus is a family affair. The uh, family, uh, I'm not talking about the family I was born into through my father and mother brothers and sisters, there were eight of us, nor my wife and my sons and my grandchildren, the community, all those people that I grew up with that made uh, contributions to the program, the faculty, the staff, the students. how important they are to our well-being. My parents came here over a hundred years ago. As George said, they were immigrants. <clears throat> they came in search of opportunities to create a better quality of life. They valued family, church, community, and education and knowledge was reminded how important education was this weekend when Father Rusakis in his presentation at the seminar talked about 400 years being a slave. Greece celebrates its independence, celebrated yesterday its independence, but for those of us of Greek descent, the memory needs to be that for 400 years we were under the oppression of the Ottoman Empire. The intent of that was genocide basically to destroy the religion, the faith, the language of the Greek people. But the priests and the families they would have school classes in the caves, in the wilderness, to maintain that language, to maintain their faith and their celebration. So to our parents, who at most, their opportunity was maybe to get a sixth grade education, especially if they came from the islands or from the villages. Yet all of them pressed hard for each of us to take advantage of education. If you look at uh, Tarpon Springs back before the 70s, it went through some economic hardships. You had the, the Depression, you had World War II, you had the blight on the sponges which killed the beds and 
put the industry out. Then you had the Korean War. And each year, families were struggling to maintain a quality of life and yet give their children the best that they could give them. This is a wonderful country. There's opportunity galore. The other side of that, the element that we need to be sensitive to is access to those opportunities. What good is an opportunity if you can't access it? And the theme here for our students was every student that walks in the door in this building was to be able to access the opportunities for a quality education. And that's where our faculty members rose to the occasion so nicely. It was alluded that our beginning happened in 1970. What I need to share with you is a little more information than that. After the college had decided that Tarpon Springs, a population of less than 5,000, uh, wasn't large enough, even though the community college uh, movement, the junior college movement in the country in the, in the 60s said, let's move programs out into the community. So the feeling is, why not Tarpon community? College says, well, 5,000 5, population, uh, maybe not. Uh, but the the gift you can't refuse, the offer you can't refuse came. And that offer was, Dr. Bennett, we will provide the space free of charge to the college if you'll provide the instruction. He said, if it doesn't work, you pull your faculty members back, it doesn't cost you anything, and go on about our business. So it was a three-year agreement. You had three years to make it work. The agreement was struck in February. Classes were starting in August. And the decision is, where in Tarpon can you find space? Well, that second floor of the Spring State Bank building used to be offices. <laughs> and it was an office that if you got 10 people in there, you were wall to wall. <laughs> and that was the first closeness of faculty to students that existed. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't get away from Faculty members were right in the middle of students. Uh, it's almost like a Aristotle, Socrates, Plato time uh, experience. How fortuitous for us was the Spring State Bank Building is adjacent to St. Nicholas Cathedral. Now that's significant because St. Nicholas is the patron saint of all sailors. Well, we were embarking on a voyage, and if Homer were here, those of you in the classics, he could have written a story that could have been a combination of Odysseus' trip from Troy to Ithaca, or Hercules in search of the Golden Fleece, somewhere in that. So the challenges were great and many, but St. Nicholas was always there, never failed us. Uh, as was shared, it didn't take us but a semester to outgrow those four classrooms above the bank building. The, we, Nina, our, uh, Nina Asimak, a lifetime friend and an educator in the community. She was the gra grassroots uh, connection that I had in Tarpon of helping me find space and we did. We found every nook and cranny where you could have a, a class, hospitals, churches, the courthouse, whenever there wasn't court scheduled or the city commission meeting scheduled, there were classes in that space. Everything is always free. We outgrew that. Fortuitous again, St. Nicholas brought in the Rotary Club. They had a building on Lime Street and they said, we've got a building. Why don't you use it for your classes? He said, but for legal reasons, we have to charge you a dollar a year. And in light of the obligation of the city, one of the Rotarians will pay that one dollar. So you don't have to pay anything. So we never had to deal with the fact 
of paying anything. Well, we, the Rotary Club gave us that. We stayed into that uh, until 75 when we came uh, to this site. Originally, when Mike Bennett said, Nick, go look for some land. Well, there's 120 acres here. They said, we're not going to buy 120 acres. I said, get whatever you want. It's time because there's no place else to go. And our enrollment's 500. We've used everything in Tarpon. So the decision was, well, we'll buy 50 acres, 50 of that. I said, fine, we'll take it. Whatever it is, we'll take for us. Our feeling is, give it to us, and we'll figure out what to do with it once we get it. And the million dollars, it's easy. It's interesting how philosophies go. It was, now, we have a million dollars, so you figure out all the things that you need, but all you can spend is a million dollars. No, don't figure out what you need, and then we'll put the money, is we're working against the dollar bill. So with a million dollars, we started with our cluster of buildings uh, on the west side of the campus. That was a year, we went five years without any full-time faculty members. Thanks, Clearwater St. Pete, members of the community, faculty for coming to campus and providing quality education. We didn't get a full-time faculty member until 75, and you see many of them here. Uh, Hugh Leeper, Fred Seacall, uh, Barbara Wakin, not here, Marion Shea passed on. But any, in any event, when you have five, and you're covering every course in the college curriculum, I, I guarantee you that, uh, talk about your math teacher, you go everything from fingers and toe to calculus three. <laughs> and if John knows, if you're in, uh, John Chapin knows that if you're teaching science, it's everything from intro to chemistry, to fundamentals of biology, to microbiology, to anatomy and physiology. And the thing about that, all of that has to happen in one semester because we need to have the second half of that going to the following term. And Laura, uh, 12 prep. <laughs> yeah, Laura, 12. Hey, and I think that they were measuring who gets most. Laura gets most preparation. Eva Hefner gets the most preparation. Or John Chapin gets, or. So we have a faculty that they would teach five to seven days a week day and evening. Many times they didn't get paid for classes that they taught. They basically were insane. Anclote Manor, <laughs> Anclote Manor is just down the road here. It used to be a psychiatric. And that's not where I recruited faculty. But, they, <laughs> but that's where they went when they got through here. But the, the commitment of faculty was unbelievable. And our career staff, the career staff knew and as was mentioned here, you have only one chance to make a first impression. Only one time in your life. So if, if this is the first time I'm speaking to some of you, you're meeting me, I, I hope I'm not blowing it because the rest of the time is trying to make up for the blunders. But you only have one time in life to make a first impression. So our career staff, our facilities people, the site's always been immaculate because they know when they drive up, the, the site has to be inviting. So when they park, it's an inviting site. This is a good place. Our security people greet them at the, feel safe, with a smile on their face. It's always a smile on There's no room for grumps here, except me whenever I. <laughs> but when they walked in that door, we knew it was going to be, they came here for a purpose. They wanted to change their life. And if we messed it up at that door by putting them through what we call the pinball machine, bouncing them here, bouncing them there, bouncing them there, and as Sally indicates that uh, the strength uh, of this particular building is that when that student walks in, it's almost like an octopus. It just sucks you in and you don't get out till you get what you need. And that's something I learned from my dad when I was you know, it's amazing the things that you learn from your parents. Uh, you don't realize that till later in life. But 
as when I helped one summer at the curio stop, shop down at the docks. He said, now Nick and I was like the age of one of my younger grandsons. He said, now when somebody comes in, he says, they're coming in because they want something. So don't let them leave until they have it. He says, I, I don't know what they want, but don't let them leave without it. And as I shared with the staff, there are people that are coming up here to change their life. And as Sally and Maria and Myrtle will share, people will tell us, they drive up, have driven up here three, four, five times, sat in their car, sit, trying to get enough nerve, trying to get enough nerve to come to come in and see a counselor advisor. And when they come, it's like a steamroller. They said, "I want to see a counselor. I want to see an advisor." Well, they were already clued to when you see someone that has finally build up the courage to come in that door then we want to be a part of them accessing the opportunity for a better quality of life that's we, we heard it today it's not Nick it's here I, I mean I'm, I, I'm my heart so full with the people that I've worked with <laughs> I take a deep breath and because their focus <clears throat> I guess it's time to end the program. <laughs> <laughs> their focus is on students. So, uh, we, as we said, we don't exist. If, if you take the students out of this mix, what do you have? You have some buildings and you've got some people. All of us, we know we're important. If you don't think we're important, ask us. But the reality of it all, just as my parents came here to create a better quality of life, the students that come here come to develop a better quality of life. And we have that responsibility. If we miss that responsibility, then we are doing them a major injustice because they may never go to another campus again. They may never pursue that next step. And all of our, our faculty, our staff, realize that burden. They knew how important it was. And you're right, it was every time we meet. Remember why we're here. Let's not lose sight of what we're here. We're all important, but it's for the student. And it's making sure that our students were competitive with any other student at any college or university in the country. Our students were not going to be disadvantaged because they came here. And as we look at research data that came back to us from the state universities, our students scored as well or better than the native students that started there as freshmen. Now, now that, that, that basically is not me, it's the faculty, it's the staff. When students tell you, I live in Pasco County, Hernando County, Hillsborough County, and yet they drive by all those colleges to come here. They don't come here because it's an easy B. They come here because faculty care. For over 25 years, faculty members never had a door on their office. Students could walk in and see a faculty member anytime because we knew we employed that thorn in the finger philosophy. I don't know. <laughs> if, as, a, as a kid or as an adult, when you get a thorn in your finger, it stings, it feels uncomfortable. If you pull it out, and you suck on it, you forget all about what had happened there. If you leave that thorn in that finger, then it becomes infected, your fingers infected, your arms infected, maybe gangrene, who knows, you may lose your life, all because 
you didn't take direct action to get that thorn out and solve that problem. Everyone here has been empowered to make the decisions. They didn't need me to ask me. In fact, they said, get out of the way, go to a meeting in district because it's run better without you. But <laughs> the, uh, but the emphasis there is allowing our focus to stay where it should be. And I know we could go on if we had cups of coffee and I know our Hellenic group and I am so proud uh, when we were invited on campus uh, by the Hellenic group that had shared that they as an organization, it's not a Greek organization, even though Greece was the cradle of democracy and all the good things that, <laughs> the, uh, well, we have to throw in a little baklava and pastizo and moussaka on the side. But Hellenism is something that it's part of all of our lives. We all study, we have all studied. We see it whether we know it or not. You're basically in, your, in, the, in the Hellenic culture, aside of being suppressed by the Turks for over 400 years, trying to destroy all of there that was Greece, that basically survived and we're here. Uh, I guess maybe Odysseus might be approaching uh, Ithaca and it's time for Nick to get off the boat. Uh, have we have we achieved the golden fleece? Nada. Uh, people ask me, he says, is it more than you ever thought? I said, no. No, as Nina would share, no, it's not more. In fact, why haven't we gone further? Well, we had a few detours, but basically it's like you mathematicians, it's like infinity. You know infinity. It's not that little cartoon that you see on TV where, I mean, it's a little short where they're selling insurance or whatever. When the kid says, which is better, greater infinity or infinity plus one. Well, infinity in mathematics is it swells without bounds. There's no end to it. This program continues to grow. As long as there's a search for knowledge, and as long as there are people that care, and as long as there are faculty members that are committed to the process of teaching and learning and helping people change their lives, I know it's the big hook coming at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, my family, but I, I'm not going to you know, get by without introducing my family, and I'm going to have, have them come up because they have paid the price. And George, George, you only violate child labor if you're getting paid. When you're not getting paid, it's a community service. So I guarantee you, you weren't going to, you know you weren't going to get paid. Uh, my wife, Mariella, who's been the, the rock, come on up now. Has been the, uh, the rock and the stabilizer of the family. We all, uh, well, naturally, we feed, she feeds us, but her energy and keeping us focused as to those things that are, that are important. My son, Michael. Michael, I know you're here. You can't hide. Michael's an adjunct faculty member of mathematics. He wanted to to be a teacher whenever he was in high school, and I said, if you want to go, I'm not going to pay your way through college. I said, <laughs> I said, you have got to survive and make a living. At that time, there wasn't any money there, but I said, eventually, an opportunity to teach a class at the college might surface. Uh, Michael, his daughter, Michelle, uh, she came in from North Carolina. It's, uh, she was the first girl in the family. My wife wanted girls. She got four sons. <laughs> Uh, Nicholas, Michael's uh, son, he's at Auburn and he's in graduate studies and couldn't break away to, to get here. George, you, you heard, come on up George, you heard from George. George is, is the mouthpiece of the group. He, he, if, if there's something that says, go tell George, go tell dad. George. So if I see George coming, I says, I've got a revolt in the ranks. Mark, 
Dr. Mark. <laughs> Mark is a professor at the Seminole campus in, in mathematics. Uh, his wife, Julie. Julie supervised the first interns at the College of Education and we're happy to have her. Now their daughters, El Elaine. Uh, Elaine is in the outstanding collegiate uh, high school program. This, at the end of this term, Elaine will be graduating both from Clearwater High School and from St. Petersburg College. We are. <laughs> See, this makes it tough on the others. <laughs> Because once the oldest one sets the standards, the rest have got to meet it or they're going to be doomed. Nicole, uh, Mark's daughter, second daughter, and Stephanie. And we have Andrew. His wife, Laura. You got off easy, Andrew. I did get off easy. Yeah. Sarah. Alexandra. Nicholas. Hey, Nick, your name's on the board. <laughs> and the dynamite of the group, Matthew. Whenever we're talking about enrollment, there's two ways to get enrollment. One is to go out and recruit them, the other is to grow them. <laughs> but the, the thing that is, that's interesting, I don't know, Bill, if you keep numbers or if there's a Guinness book, but as I, as I thought back, uh, as I looked at my brothers, brother Ted is here, his wife Lula, uh, sister Frances, her husband Bill, my brother George, his wife Beverly, uh, that all the group, for me to go to college, that made extra burden on them. Because when you have eight in a family and one goes and everybody's working, then they got to pick up the slack. And I'm appreciative for, for what they did. But in all of this, their children, my nieces, nephews, there were 32 Valerises that have attended St. Petersburg College. Now that's... That's enough to start a college of our own, for sure. So I was never worried about enrollment. It's some time to have more children. But it, you have honored us uh, when you... You put my name on the wall and I, I thank you and I will forever remember that. But when you put my name on the wall, you really are honoring the community. Our faculty and our students. Thank you for a great day, Bill. Thank you. Come for me. You've yes. done an outstanding job in keeping the faith. Thank you. Our Student Government Association and the Hellenic uh, Student Society. And they're going to make a presentation to Mr. Valeris. Please welcome Adina Kotovic and Rania Samartsis, please. Come on up. Hi, how's, how's everyone doing today? Me too. All right, I would like to say, first of all, I'm so excited to be here to celebrate this great day and to be in the com company of such wonderful people that I see a lot of familiar faces, so that's really, really great. My name, as Dr. Carney said, is Adina Kratovic. I'm the president of our Tarbon Springs Student Government Association. And next to me is Miss Rania, and she is the president of our Hellenic Student Society here on campus. Um, I would like to acknowledge the Hellenic Society for their dedication, hard work, and acknowledgement of Mr. Belaris's work. They met with Mr. and Mrs. Belaris on February 20th, 2014, where they welcomed him as their guest speaker on one of their regular meetings. Some of the members had met him before in the community, and some were pleased to meet him for the first time, as I am today. Um, the members were fascinated to hear how the idea of the Tarpon Springs campus originated, how Mr. Belaris made his dream of bringing Tarpon Springs College St. Petersburg College to Tarpon Springs and therefore providing higher access 
providing access to higher education to the community. He told them all about the challenges that were overcome to make the stream possible. He also stressed the importance for the community to embrace their Greek culture and carry it forward. His love of the Greek culture and for St. Petersburg College filled the room as everyone was truly touched and inspired by the end of this meeting. I am humbled to be here today to honor such an exquisite man. And with your vision for a brighter tomorrow for future students and your dedication to making that vision a reality, none of us would be here today. I remember you saying about opportunity and about changing lives. And I would like to personally say from all of the students here that you have made these opportunities and you have changed our lives. Um, absolutely. And I think for, I speak for all of us when I say thank you. And I would like to read this plaque. Um, it says, Nick M. Bolaris, the founding leader of the Tarpon Springs campus of St. Petersburg College, spent more than 30 years shepherding its growth from a few rooms on the second floor of the Spring State Bank building in Tarpon Springs to the 86 anchor campus it occupies today. And then there's some Greek lettering, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> it says, which means thank you. Okay, we're gonna. Uh,